I am so excited to interview Laura and John today. Now, Laura, I met on a, a CEO call. Now, CEO is like CEO, except CEO. And Laura did this beautiful and amazing land acknowledgement from where she is now, and that is South Africa. So I was like, I need to talk to Laura further. And then Laura, on a follow-up call, started telling me these amazing stories about her and her partner, John. And, and I was like, I would love to interview these people and, and find out a bit more about how this comes to be. So Laura and John, welcome. Thank you so much for taking time to talk to me today. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's yeah. going to be fun. Yeah, it's good to be here. And and the the reason that South Africa is amazing is because you can tell by our fancy accents, we're not actually from South Africa. We're living abroad. Just so, so the listeners are, are clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> and just to clarify, are you are you both like born and bred in Canada? Yeah, born yeah. and bred. Well, me Toronto, John. There's a Thorn technicality <laughs> in there, but yeah, I'm like let's just say Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. We're talking Canadians here. And I'm Canadian as well, but I've found myself in Barbados. And so this is an endless fascination to me about how people become to be living overseas. So the the burning question I have for, for Laura and John is how do two people decide that they're going to move overseas? Because I basically packed up and said, this is what I'm doing. But how does that work? Yeah. Okay. So without giving you too much of our life story, um, and it's quite an interesting one, if I do say so myself, um, we actually, this was not the first kind of excursion abroad or, or, you know, yeah, excursion abroad that we had done. Um, actually we spent two and a half years of consecutive travel, um, together. And the first year was actually spent, living in a van traveling across uh, North America. And so I guess the question would be like, how did we come to that decision? Um, and that actually ultimately that experience kind of transcended into, you know, a nomadic kind of lifestyle. Yeah, and let's so, talk about that. Cause once you've done it once, you've set kind of a blueprint and you know you can do it again. So let's go back to so, that, to that first excursion. And how, how did that come to be? Well, it was kind of a no-brainer for us <laughs> because we're really into rock climbing and we had done this van life thing before like the hashtag van life thing even exploded. Like dozens of our friends had already gone and done the van life. So for us, it was just a natural progression that we would go at some point, do the usual pilgrimage around North America to all the rock climbing sites and go rock climbing. I think before that though, when we first got together, so I, I kind of said to you before we started recording this, Sherry, that, it's, that, that it was a mixture of luck and intention. And what I mean by that is the luck piece of having us kind of come together was that we were both kind of uh, adventure seekers. When we first got together, we kind of did a values check yeah, it <laughs> on was each other really early on, like very, very early on, like within like a couple of months, we were talking about what our future plans were, what um, we valued. And one thing that I had in my mind was to actually travel. Well, I was going to do a long, um, you know, trip to South America. Uh, then he actually convinced me that a van trip was maybe uh, better. So, well, not better, just the way to go. And so that, that kind of luck piece of us meeting and like, you know, knowing what we wanted in a partner and knowing that these were like our non-negotiables, that's really what kind of brought that piece together. And then the intention was actually making it happen. That's right. And there was a lot that went into that as well. We had spoken about it for a while. It took years of planning. We were very frugal leading up to that trip, you know, not eating out a lot, not buying unnecessary things, like, you know, limiting our vacations in order to make that a reality. And um, I would also say, I mean, we skipped, skipped the wedding, don't have a mortgage, don't have kids, no debt. Um, so all of that so kind deprived. of, yeah. So all of that created the conditions that allowed us to, and again, those are things that were important to us. It lines up with our values. It lines up with what it is that we wanted to create in our lives and still do want to create in our lives. So um, that so those was those are of, intentional choices. That's right. All of them were very intentional 
choices. Yeah. So there was some conversation you guys had right early on and you call it values, but it was signals to each other of this is what I want in my life. Totally. Absolutely. And being very clear about that. Being That's very one thing clear about that, has, that. that has um, kind of, you know, we're, the reason we're on, we're, we're talking to you today is because we're doing this as a couple and people are very interested in like, how do you do this as a couple? We spend a lot of time together. We're in business together as well. We're abroad together. And um, it's some people's nightmare. <laughs> clear communication is absolutely key. And uh, we still have our pubs. We still, yeah, we still have moods and emotions and miscommunications and all that kind of fun stuff. But it's uh, not just clear communication, but our commitment to clear communication that has made a world of difference in, in making this all, you know, come to fruition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I find that really exciting that two people can be clear, first of all, clear about what they want, because a lot of us know what we don't want, but we dare, I think we dare to dream about what we want. And I think this is like, this is kind of a dream for some people, right? If you go right back to what you were talking about at the start, about going on a van trip and hitting all the rock climbing places that you wanted to do, like some people dream about that their whole life and aren't able to make it happen. I think that the interesting part about dreams is like we only see the end product like in, you know, the media of like what, like of people enjoying themselves. And there's a, like, I mean, like low key sacrifice, like, okay, maybe I can't have pho this week, you know, but like there's sacrifice that goes into making these decisions. Like I know some friends of mine, like wouldn't dare not have a wedding, you know, like that, like those are, those are choices that are decisions that we make. Um, and they're based on dreams that we have and and I think also for me I've been like absolutely non-negotiable on like what I want for my life I've had a lot of time to think about it even before the trip like this is what I want in a partner this is what I want like my my future to look like and it wasn't necessarily living in South Africa but it was definitely a life where I wasn't settling and that's really like a commitment that I had at a very young age for myself um, and so you know it was like I was kind of like scoping like who fits the mold like not you next not you next like I was like very ruthless with my dating you know um, and, actually, and I just want to I just want to interrupt you to say that I think that is very important especially for young women to hear because I don't know that that's a message we get often we get your picky uh you won't find that or you know you'll just make it work and I think there's something to be said, and I think the both of you are saying this about being so clear about what you want and then believing it's out there and making it happen. And John, you're on your side, you must have had some of that going on as well. I think to an extent, yeah, absolutely. Knowing that I, I had actually even already done some travels abroad. And so yeah, I knew that I initially Actually, you know, it's funny, like, I, I don't actually, I think that we're kind of like muffling. There are times where we don't know what we want, but there are times of clarity and it's when we're clear, we want to actually take action. And so that's what I ended up doing. I know at least for meeting Laura and taking ourselves on the trip. And then when this opportunity opened up to come here to South Africa, where we've been living for the last year and a half, and we intend to live here for maybe another year, um, when that opportunity showed up, um, we jumped on it. We didn't wait. And, and so what, it, what was it about that opportunity to South Africa that you thought, like, what is it that spoke to you where you're like, I'm willing to leave Canada, which is a place that many people, and I've heard this all the time, that many people would die to live in, right? And it's not to say you're not going back, but how, what was it about that, this trip, this adventure that spoke to you and said, yeah, we're willing to leave Canada and go live in South Africa? Well, we were intending to leave anyway. We had done this travel. Uh, we went back to Toronto after it was all done. We were there for about a year and a half. Uh, actually, and within like the first six months, we were already kind of getting like some itchy feet. And, you know, we actually did this trip. Like we went on just like a vacation to visit some friends in Colombia. 
and we had created an intention for our trip. And the intention was to decide like what we wanted to do moving forward. And the reason we did it while we were on vacation was to remove ourselves from our context because we knew that being in Toronto was really comfortable. We had friends, we had family taking care of us. And so we knew that if we just stayed in Toronto and we made decisions from that context, it would have impacted our ultimate decision for what it is that we really, really wanted. And taking ourselves out of that, getting ourselves uncomfortable, unfamiliar, um, it had us realize, oh, no, wait, we love this. This is so cool and adventurous and it's way more aligned with our values. And that's what ultimately sparked this idea of like, yeah, we need to leave at some point. We don't know where we're going to go. Um, but we want to at least try being nomadic for a little bit. And I think what you said is really important is we're, you know, we're privileged enough that we can go home whenever we want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We have some family there that's ready to support us if we need. Um, and we can go home to like this incredible country with free healthcare that's safe and are going to welcome us back whenever we want. So, um, yeah. I think also we're kind of growth junkies. So, you know, we're coaches and uh, like we're executive coaches and we work in the social impact space. And so, um, you know, growth is one of both of our top, one of our top values. And when I thought, you know, oh my gosh, South Africa. Yeah, that sounds like a place that's gonna be hard. And I actually remember expressing that and being like excited about it. And it is hard. It really is emotionally taxing to live here um, due to the kind of socioeconomic issues and um, inequality. And we didn't realize that we would be here during a global pandemic. <laughs> so it was like doubly a challenge, really interesting challenge. Yeah, and, and to be clear, what drew us here was an opportunity to do some work. So that was kind of like looming in the background. We would, I don't think we would throw ourselves into like very difficult situations. We were told it's actually really awesome here. And it is, by the way, it's like so beautiful here. It's, beautiful. So it's incredible. They just are also dealing with some wild, socioeconomic issues. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you, let me ask you a bit more about this. This, this um, dynamic of growth, and I'm, I'm with you on this. I'm, I'm a huge proponent that we should try to become the best human beings that we can possibly be on this earth. That's kind of my definition of growth. You might have a different definition, but the dynamic of growth and discomfort. Because you've mentioned um, both those words. Like the dynamic oh, doesn't that just go hand in the hand. The opposite can of you, can growth you, is is com comfort. I think. Can, can you grow without discomfort? That's a good question. What do you think, Jerry? I don't. I don't know if you can grow the way that you guys are growing. I think <laughs> that's because when you mentioned, I have that sense too. When I was, I came from Ottawa to here, and I had that sense too of like, I'm so comfortable here. And this is, this is great. And don't get me wrong, Ottawa is a great place to live. But it wasn't until I landed here that I was like, I maybe should have left a couple of years earlier. And so it sounds like you honored that voice right on time. You, you mentioned, John, something about itchy feet. Like, what, what does that mean for you? I think it, I think it was that, that lust for adventure in our lives. Another one of our top values. Yeah, ad adventure is hugely important to us. And, you know, we were living in the suburbs just north of Toronto. Um, not, not our ideal spot. And although we were filling up our time with activities we loved to do, I mean, we were rock climbing and we were doing a lot of workshops, seminars, personal development, coach training, all, all sorts of like stuff, like, like literally like back to back, not like it was a crazy schedule we had. Like it's wild how we managed that our lives. That year was more difficult than, than traveling. Like yeah. it was just so full of like coming back from a two and a half year trip. It, it was just like, we were thrust into basically like, uh, reverse cult culture shock, you know, is like, holy man, like, oh yeah. I mean, obviously other people had grown, but we had literally, I had literally become a different person. Like my friends did not know who I was at that point. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I interrupted. That's you, okay. I think that the, the question of coming back to the itchy feet, yeah. I think at the end of the day, what it is, is, um, it's just, I, I would say like a gut feeling but what really sealed the deal was this, this trip we decided to do. We went on vacation for a couple weeks and it was when we were there, we're like, yeah, this is cool. How do we fill our lives with this, with 
this sense of adventure, this sense of variety, this sense of almost like uncertainty. Also hanging out with, um, we were there to visit friends who we absolutely adore. So like, how do we fill it up with those kinds of connections and all of those things? Because we know that it's possible because anything's possible. And so that's kind of what guided us to creating um, this life that we're living right now. So you had this, like, by all accounts, this great life in Toronto. So you had friends, you had a place to live, you had a great, it sounded like your businesses were going great, everything was, but there was a little piece, piece missing and it sounds like that was adventure. And that is one of your top values and your top, was it, yearnings, I guess. Yeah, totally. I, I would say like by on like paper, it was great. Um, but there was just a deep sense of disconnection at that point for, for me, at least with Toronto. Like even if we went back to Canada, like we would not be living there. Um, and, and so like being in the Toronto suburbs, actually really interestingly, one of the things that had gone through my mind of like, if this is the worst case scenario, cause it was for me at the time, cause like the suburbs of Toronto is like my personal hell. So like, <laughs> I'm like, if this is as bad as it's going to get, actually, I can do anything because this isn't really that bad, you know? And some people's dreams. Yeah, it's literally some people's dreams. No some shade on dreams. them. That's a beautiful dream. Yeah. Yeah. And, do, and just just for anyone outside of Canada watching this, Toronto is actually is an amazing city. I, I lived in Toronto. I, I lived in Toronto for six years too, but then... I reach that point where I'm like, I got two choices. I can continue living downtown and paying a lot of money for a lifestyle I'm not totally using, or I can go to the suburbs and commute in. And I was like, that is not happening in my <laughs> lifetime. And so, and so I ended up leaving Toronto, but Toronto is for all intents and purposes as a city, an amazing city. Really but, great. But we all have to choose where our place in the world is and it's not always where we grew up. It's not always where we lived for a decade, whatever the case may be. And it sounded like you guys were like, mm, this is not hitting the mark for whatever reason. Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't, I think one thing that also um, I know I risk doing from time to time is like having it have to look a certain way, like having life or having my lifestyle have to look a certain way. And you really just can't tell. And it's, I, I think I, I found this, I'm trying to continue to find this balance about being attached to it, looking a certain way and just kind of going with the flow um, and allowing it to unfold however it needs to unfold. And also giving myself permission to change my mind because, you know, we could have come to South Africa and hated it. I could have, I could have absolutely hated it and just been like, no, this is, this is not working. And I'm fortunate enough again to have this like the privilege from an economic standpoint, from a you know family support standpoint, that um, I can make that decision, and so you know have I have that decision available to me. It doesn't I don't have to commit, and it doesn't mean anything about me if I do go back on, on that word. Right, mm -hmm. a decision is just a decision, and and I think especially in North America, we get so bent out of shape about making a decision. It has to be the right decision. And I think you're right, John. What does that say about me if I make this big decision and it sucks and I put all this effort into it, but it's just part of the journey, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. So, so let's you put yourself in the mind frame. You're like, okay, there's this opportunity in South Africa. We're going to go. So how does one get ready to basically upend their life? from Toronto to somewhere in South Africa. And where did you start in South Africa? You, you've moved a couple of places. Yeah, okay, well, you can talk about the, like, I mean, the logistics it, for the visa. Is it around, around the logistics? I mean, we just, all we had was this opportunity to potentially work with this organization. And then we just kind of- Oh my gosh, got the visa in. process. The visa process was terrible. quite a nightmare, <laughs> but we just got into action. It's like really simple. You just find out, okay, what information do we need? What steps do we need to take? And you just, you just take the action, you put in your calendar, whatever it is that you need to do to get it done. But like, if any, any person who might like be like, like looking for signs from God that you like should or shouldn't do something, all the whole visa process was like, we should not be going oh, yeah. to South Africa. That was the universe telling us this is a terrible <laughs> <Yeah>. idea. <laughs> um, but it worked out. And honestly, because we had um, lived in a van for a year and then traveled with backpacks for a year, 
we like progressively got rid of more and more stuff to the point where now we just have like a room full of things like not even half a room full of things at his at his mom's place and in, in storage which is mostly camping gear it's mostly camping gear <laughs> um so we don't own a lot of things yeah um so it was really easy to move around because we're not attached to things or even really looking a certain way i do miss some of my my nicer clothes but yeah once you start to be like once you allow yourself to renounce like the possessions that you think were important um then you start to realize that oh i actually need a whole lot less than i initially thought yeah it's interesting though when we arrived in south africa uh we didn't have a lot but since we've kind of like been here a while and like gotten comfortable even though we have moved a bit we've acquired things just, just small things just like small things, a like, salad spinner <laughs> yeah salad spinner very important for us apparently so anyway it's i think like when you are stationary the 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 kind of modus operandum is like how can i make this more comfortable comfortable you that's know? the key thing right is the comfort level of things and admittedly moving around is not that comfortable no it's it's, it can be quite comfortable. Transitions are like, you know, we under, we underscore how challenging transition can be. I think about, especially as someone who's moving apartments or moving houses, you know, I think that we don't give that the credit it due. It's a really difficult transition. There's a lot of moving part. There's disruptions and routines. There's things that go wrong on the way. You have to figure out groceries, yeah. like new grocery stores, new there's, food stuff. There's lots of moving parts and our brains don't like the unpredictability and uncertainty. And so it can be quite a stressful experience. And I know, you know, from us, I think about our backpacking. Yeah, it's not always the most comfortable thing. We were much younger then, so we didn't really care as much about comfort. But I know now having those extra small things here and there, like, you know, now we have a roller. We like to roll out our, you know, muscles. That's so nice. It's, it's so really nice. nice. I, I can't imagine like not traveling. We better. also have one at home. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you accumulate those things in order to be more comfortable. I think that's kind of like the crux of what you are. And so about. the novelty, like for us, trumps the comfort. But when it kind of wears off, then it's like, oh, how can we make this? like more settled more easeful yeah more easeful mm -hmm. well and i think there's there's different levels of comfort let's just be clear here because there is basically camping for a year like living in a van is not too far away from camping really like let's be honest there's physical comfort and then there's the comfort of things around us right mm -hmm. and so i think different people have different levels of comfort and the other thing you spoke about was going to a foreign country and going even to a grocery store and going, I don't even recognize any of these brands. Like South Africa is pretty British. I have, I have some friends here in Barbados from South Africa and they went to the States before they came here. And they were just like, same thing. Like, I don't recognize things. And I had this conversation with them and they were saying the very same thing you were. Every time you make a transition, it throws you in discomfort and it can be stressful, but it's the growth you get from that learning that trumps it. That's the conversation I had with them. I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I, I, I really agree. Yeah, I, what do you think? I think that at the end of the day, it just depends on the person and what they value. You can turn anything in life into a growth opportunity. I really think so. That's a huge, was a huge, huge theme about our travels. Um, <laughs> and it's a huge theme of our lives, period. You can grow from anything. You can see anything as an opportunity to learn and grow. And so- um, I As long that, as you value that. That's right. As long as that's something of value. And it's not, not to say that you don't value it. There just might, and there often is for a lot of folks- other values that are just more important and there's nothing wrong with that it's just a choice that everyone makes I think whether consciously or unconsciously I was just gonna say I think it's like one like one thing that I would you know stress for people and like I mean we talk about this with our clients but it's like when you actually understand what values are at play and what needs are at play and how you're meeting those needs and how you're fulfilling on those values 
then the intention is there to either continue going down that route or changing like, you know, and aligning to more, you know, the vision of what it is that you want. Um, but I don't think a lot of us take the time to, um, to deconstruct that and, and really understand like what's driving us. And, and even when we're, you know, ha having done that, we still, it's, it's important that we revisit it. Yeah. Oh, and we're totally. constantly revisiting it. Right. Because values change slowly over time, but needs are constantly shifting. And um, having those conversations, I think, are absolutely critical to, you know, knowing what's important to you and, and continuing to live a, a life that's satisfying, fulfilling and where you're thriving. Because I think some people will see this video or think about these things and they'll be like, oh, I've always wanted to travel. But they may not have an understanding of what that entails or living overseas, always wanted to live overseas, but maybe not have an understanding of what that entails. And then there's others that maybe think, oh, man, that seems really hard. But for them to hear, well, if this is important to you, you'll make it happen and it'll feel great, even though it might not be the most comfortable thing. If that's what your soul desires, it's going to feel great when you finally do this. Totally. Yeah. And, and it can be scary to step into the unknown. Especially if you're doing it solo. I feel that we have a strength in that, like John is my home. I know it sounds cheesy, but he's my home. So like, there's always that like, like pillar that is there for me as a support. Now, whether it's with friends or family or, you know, a community that you, you take on in your new place or even a practice, like we have a meditation practice or rock climbing, like when you have those pillars in your life, they, you're able to kind of shape and, and find security and, and connection where it seems to not be uh, available, but it actually is. It's just like an inner instead of an outer. And, and I'll, I'll give one example, actually. One thing that's made a huge difference for us in all of our travels is we mentioned that rock climbing is a huge part of our life. And um, not that we're like, we we always find our soulmates in the rock climbing community. But one thing we almost always do wherever we go is as soon as we land somewhere, we reach out to the climbing community. We say, hey, we're here. We want to go rock climbing. Who, who wants to go with us? And we always have people reaching out. And that's how we make like really quick friends. And even if they're not going to be our friends, maybe they can introduce us to the next person and the next person. And, and that's how we, we create community around us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I call that building community. And yeah. you just use that word community, right? So it's, it's very easy in a foreign country to feel lonely. And, and part, of, part of being successful, I think, in living in a foreign country is building community. So you're actually not alone because there's a lot of things you leave at home when you, you leave your home country. And for me, yoga is my is my community. I always find, um, go out, find a great instructor and these people attract other people that are, that just happen to be wanting community. They're usually kind. Not everyone that does yoga is kind, but you find a lot of kind, thoughtful people in yoga. And, and I'm glad you found that through your rock climbing community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the other things that like when, so one thing you mentioned, Laura, that I want to come back to and that is, you said the visa process was super difficult. And if you had been looking for signs from the universe, you might have thought, oh, this is telling me not to go. And my selling my house back at home, I went through some of this too. There were some things happen that had never happened in this home. And as soon as I went to sell it, I was like, how can the furnace break today? This is not happening. But for me, I felt this such a deep sense that I needed to leave and go and come to Barbados that I was like, I... I plowed on. So how do you explain that, you know, things are not smooth here, but I feel like we should still go. I think uh, <laughs> it's like kind of like jumping into the deep end. Like, John, I mean, I'll speak for myself, but I think we're kind of similar in that when we make a commitment and we have a resolve for that commitment, there are very few, and not to say that we're inflexible, but there are very few, like when we verbalize that we're doing something, we like actively fulfill on our word as like a matter of like integrity, you know? And so, you know, us going to South Africa was very much a declaration. We started sharing it with everyone and it wasn't like, oh, I don't want to look bad. So now we have to go, but it's like, 
the more you visualize and share and um, kind of live into that future, the more it becomes real. And so the challenges that you come up against, and maybe you felt this as well, they're less, they're just, they become annoyances versus like, oh, like maybe I shouldn't be doing this, you know, like they become annoyances versus like full stop blocks. Yeah. And, and I think what's made the biggest difference for us to even get to that point, because I know there's, there might be some people watching this, listening, who might have some difficulties with just being able to like declare it and like make it a reality because there's going to be challenges <laughs> is, you know, is picking something in your life, a habit maybe that you want to form for us. I remember, I mean, there's been lots of different things, but the one thing that sticks out the most is our meditation practice. And we kind of made a decision that we were going to do this practice. And we had this resolve, this unbeatable resolve to meditate. And we have meditated every day now for almost four years straight without missing a single day. We've meditated on planes and trains, on airplanes and airports and bus stations and libraries and parks and like anywhere you can imagine we've done it and and just know knowing ourselves as the kind of people who will do what we say makes a huge difference and so i would offer to anyone watching or listening if you really want to create that resolve for getting yourself results is pick something that you are like no matter what this will happen and any t every time you kind of like manage to do that to like no kidding make it happen you're going to build kind of that momentum and then it's just a snowball effect from there. In everywhere. And your anywhere life. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. But I like, I like what you're saying too, though. It's not because you're stubborn. We're not, let's not confuse being stubborn or inflexible. It's because there is something calling you to do it. And you know, if I do this, it's going to be good for me. And therefore, I know any effort I put towards it, it's all like going to the, the right path. It's aligned, I guess, would be a good word for it. Yeah, we see it as uh, our access to freedom. Like literally like our, our discipline is our freedom. Right. Our access to freedom. I like that. <laughs> and so when you came to South Africa um, and, and you realized, and you probably, you probably had notions of this before, but you came to South Africa and you realized that you're in a place that has some social economic challenges were you, did you still feel like you were in the right place and you'd done the right thing? Or did you have moments where you're like, oh, wow, this is, this is big. Well, for me, it was not, um, when, okay, so there's like a difference, but for me between kind of landing in a place and being like, oh my gosh, this is like where I'm supposed to be versus like, this is something that we're doing, like, as a growth opportunity. Um, South Africa for me isn't home. I don't feel like a serious like heart connection or intuition connection to the land. Um, and so there was never a point where we landed and I'm like, what have we done? But it, it's more like, oh, how long are we going to stay? Because it's not going to be forever, you know? Um, yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? I would say I, I would agree. I think that you put it well. And I mean, at the end of the day, we also landed and it's and it's still easy enough to get around. Everyone speaks English here. Yeah. And, you know, there's grocery stores. And during the day where we were living in Cape Town and the City Bowl, it's like it's like pretty safe to walk around during the day, like unless you're really walking down some sketchy alley. I mean, you just... <laughs> Just, well, I don't feel as safe. She doesn't feel as safe. As a, as, white, as, man, as a, as a white man, I feel yeah. very safe there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just, like a, it's just like a normal city where people are walking around. And so it was like pretty comfortable for us from that perspective. But I agree with Laura. I think you said it really well. It didn't initially feel like, yeah, we're going to stay here forever. But um, we're definitely going to enjoy ourselves while we're here, knowing that we can leave um, whenever we want, really. Whereas yeah. on the flip side, like we landed in like Bali, like Ubud, Bali, and I was like, this is, this feels like a deep sense of connection for whatever reason. Um, and so there are certain places like that around the world that I actually have hearted on Google Maps where it's like, oh, these are places I know where I feel like a sense of awe when I'm there. I totally, and I totally know that feeling because um, years ago, I, I lived in London, England for a couple of years. 
And it is an amazing place. Like, tr like London, England truly is one of those amazing places in the world. I never, ever felt like England was a place I was going to hang my hat. It was, it was like, it was a, a limited time offer and it was fantastic. But when I came to Barbados, I was like, I, I may never leave here. I may, I may go back to Canada, but there's a possibility I may never leave this island. I mean, except for, you know, trips, um, because I have a deep sense of feeling great here. And, and for me, a lot of that has to do with the weather, but for other people, it's, it's, it could be anything, right. That draws you to a place. I mean, speaking of the weather, I think <laughs> to be honest, when, when it became winter here, I had a thing of, Oh, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> because they have winter here. It's not as intense as in Canada, but we definitely don't have the gear, like all of our warm clothes are back home because we were not prepared by for how cold, for it, how gets. cold it gets. Yeah. So, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's also a factor. Of weather. Yeah. You don't know till you know. And I have to admit this winter, I was like, awesome. I am so happy not to do a winter this year. I may never do a winter again in my entire life. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Right. And all Canadians, we understand this, this plight, you know, Canada is this amazing place and I love it. But recently someone said something to me and they said, what do you love about it? And it, it tripped me up a little bit, actually. Um, I said, but I always return to Canada. And then I questioned, do I love Canada or am I familiar with Canada? And I, don't, I still can't answer that question, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what it is for me. It's a, uh, I would say it's like a familiarity, cultural, and context. Culture, cultural context specifically, uh, and then and then relational context as well. There are there are relationships there, family, um, some close friends that is, are still there. And so, yeah, that, that feels like home. Interestingly, though, most of our like true like soulmate friends are not in Canada. They've all either like left or they're living abroad um, or they're from the States. So. We'll see what happens. So this is, this is one last thing I want to explore with you guys is this notion of global friendships because it's been difficult for me here. I meet these amazing people and then they go home or they go off to the next place. And, and you, you know, you said you have soulmates that are all around the world. How does that, for you guys, how does that work? Well, you know, it's interesting. We landed in Cape Town and I'd say it took us, you know, we, we had um, Laura's aunt and uncle there. We became fast friends with them, obviously. Um, so that was always really nice. Um, but it was always like, okay, we didn't have like tons of friends. And it took us about a year to like finally start making a couple friends. It was, I think it was particularly hard because of the pandemic. Yeah, like yeah. we just couldn't meet with people. But after a year, we started making friends. Uh, and then we left and now we're, we're just, we're kind of like snow burning a little bit on the other side of the country. And we have seeked out the climbing community, of course, and looked to create community and we haven't found anyone, no one that we really vibed with. And that's been a huge missing for us in our time here. And we're actually quite excited to go back to Cape Town and reunite with these friends um, that we made because we want to continue growing that relationship. And so when it comes to those global friendships as well, this is the constant weighing that we're going to do is how do you find the balance between um, living in your dream place, like a Barbados that has perfect weather and living where there are those people that you want to live with? Yeah. And the, the, I think to add to that, there are like three groups of people, like three couples where we're like, yes you guys and we actually met all of them abroad well not james and yeah. Anna, but now they're living abroad um and so it's almost like a shared set of values and we also very much like have maintained those friendships because we all like each of us care really really deeply for the other person we profess our love to each other pretty frequently yeah and so we have done extensive travel with all of them um and when you travel with someone, uh, there forms a pretty special bond, I think. Yeah, yeah. as long as you don't kill each other. And it's very instantaneous bond. Travelers, I, I feel like we have this, 
common understanding that we start from and then we just get really deep really quick yeah. you yeah. know yeah. with with everything you know yeah but to to go back to this whole thing around like kind of community and like having friends abroad i think this is uh something that we're in the exploration of is how to find the balance between the two i think it goes back kind of full circle to what it is that we talked about at the beginning of that those values and how they shift gradually over time you know right now we're in a place where more and more we're thinking about community and we're thinking about the people and you know they have their own plans and they're living their own lives well what would it take for us to just kind of give up some of our desires to live in a particular place and go be with them because that's more important to us and then who knows maybe down the road we'll be with them and go honestly we want to kind of go back to this place because it really vibed with us and we're ready to make some new friends and it doesn't have to look any specific way and it can change and all of that is cool and it's just about being in the discovery of what actually is going to work best for you at that time yeah Definitely. I, I would add, you know, understanding, we keep talking about values, but there's obviously we're very value driven people. It's like understanding what your values are and what needs kind of go with those. And then being able to live into that kind of fearlessly is really how we live our lives and how we, how we keep those friendships alive and how we build more. So, yeah. Beautiful. I think this is the epitome of of things that people need to think about before they move overseas, because there are reasons that the home country is such a draw for people, right? It is, a lot of it is community and family, and that can be very difficult to say goodbye to, even for periods of time. It could also be those ties keep you from having these amazing experiences, but who's, who are we to tell anyone what's right for them? Really, when it comes down to it, every person only knows what's right for them um, and whether this lifestyle would be a good option. But you know, you don't know until you try either. So that's the other thing. Amen. And one thing about family, just like as a kind of closing remark is like, we're not strangers with our family. Like I speak to my dad every week. He speaks to his mom every three days. Like it's not like, like if we were living in the same city, we would be having the same relationships, although we wouldn't be seeing each other. We would be seeing each other maybe a little bit more, but ultimately like there's still like we're living in the age of yeah. you know, the internet. I literally just pick up my phone, open messenger and just hit, I don't even tell my mom when I'm calling, I just call her and yeah, like most of the time she'll pick up and if not, we'll link up later. And it just, it's so easy. Yeah, we're highly yeah. connected. Highly, highly connected. Excellent. Well, thank you both. I so enjoyed this. And I, it's so inspiring to me to hear others that are giving it a go. And they've found a way to combine travel, but also in a way where they're not struggling. Because we've all met like the struggling travelers that you think, really, that doesn't look like a lot of fun because, you know, you're really not doing so well, but you guys look like you're doing great and you're enjoying it. And you've found that way of balancing, I'm going to say comfort with this travel experience. And it's amazing to see. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for having us. It's been really yeah. wonderful. Chatting. So thank you so much for your time. Loved it.